Right, so we got an interview with uh, Bass for Whelan. Uh, I apologize again, Bass, if I'm uh, mispronouncing your last name. Um, Bass is a very interesting fencer because from 2005 and onwards, he was at the top 16 in the world and it was from the Netherlands. And he qualified for every Olympic after that. And what's crazy is like, it, for the European zone, it's, it's crazy hard. So the fact that someone from a non, uh, one of the non-big fencing countries so consistently made it is actually just crazy. Um, he had his very own uh, very sp special footwork, his very own demeanor on the piste, and I think uh, there's a lot we can learn from him. He just retired. Uh, he was super nice, uh, very kind. We talked a lot, so I hope uh, there's quite a few stories in here. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, if you do like this, Comment down below, let us know what you think, but otherwise, uh, let's get on with the show. So, we are with Basfer Whelan from the Netherlands. Uh, to me, he's a very special fencer, just because, uh, in my mind, you were like, especially back uh, back then, uh, when you like in 2005, when you really popped off, you were like the Netherlands fencer. Uh, <laughs> And so, and then from there, like into from 2005 to when you retired uh, after Tokyo, you're just constantly in the top 16 and basically any World Cup you showed up to, you were, you, you could easily, well, someone could bet that you were going to win and they would probably not be wasting money. Um, and then, so we're going to look at some of your, t t uh, one of the main bouts we're going to go through is your, I guess that was your last World Cup victory before you retired. Um, yeah, I think so. I think the only competition after Vancouver was Kazan in, uh, in Russia. That's about it. And that was Olympics and then uh, yeah. I retired. Yep. All right. So, um, notably before we start, so I'll just ask you a few questions. So like when you make it this far into a day, so let's say against Vida, it was for you was like, was things like stamina an issue? Um, no, no, if I, if I remember, no, I have to say it differently. I remember this day very well. I, I had so much fun. And of course, this was one of the most important competitions uh, for qualifying for the Olympics. Um, I, I really needed some, uh, some points to, to qualify for a crazy uh, criteria for, for Europe. You know, I had to be in the top two individual fencers to qualify. And actually during the day, I, I felt more relaxed, you know, for me, and maybe you also have this, or maybe other, other fencers, uh, they, they have the same. For me, the most important and the most stressful match is always the first match, the top 64, you know, uh, as you told in the, in the intro, um, I'm, I'm in the top 16 since a long time, or I was since a long time. So I don't have this first day, you don't have the feeling, you don't fence a pool or any DE, so it's directly top 64, you have to be there and you have to be fully focused. So for me, this was the most uh, important match. And it was uh, not too easy against a guy from Hong Kong, if I remember well. But during the day, I felt very relaxed. And uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, in the after the semifinals, I spoke to uh, Ruben Limardo from Venezuela, and he said, "I cannot believe it. This Bida guy, he doesn't get tired. I tried everything and make him tired, move forward, backward, doing all kind of tricks, and this guy doesn't get tired." So, and yeah, it was kind of funny. But if I look at myself, I felt uh, pretty fit for this uh, for this day, and I wasn't uh, wasn't tired at all no. and then then you mentioned um from how, how does it how did you adjust your game because all of a sudden you went from uh let's we'll go back to we're going back in time 2005 now so you went from having defense pools uh to being top 16 in the world how long do you like how long did it take you to get kind of comfortable with that or did that just kind of happen what do you mean? So get comfortable with uh, only fence DEs or? Yeah, like fence DEs, like all of a sudden you pretty much don't have to fence fives unless you're going to Euros. Um, no, the, the, there is a big difference for me in, in fencing uh, pool matches or DEs, obviously. But in, in the pool matches, I, I uh, in, in, not in the intro, but before we discussed this, I, I was always so focused on winning all my matches. Um, 
or you know sometimes you can lose one but have, have a good index but okay th this focusing on winning it doesn't bring you anything because this is a, a thought about results you really have to focus on the tactics and how to beat your opponent so i was always super super concentrated in the pools and the biggest difference is in de matches in 15 matches even in the match with Bida, I try some funny stuff, you know, sometimes go to the foot, make a flick or making uh, a movement a little bit too big. This you can uh, you can afford when you are leading three or four points in a DE match, but in a pool match, you have to, uh, I always tell, tell younger fencers and, and other guys that you have to fence boring. So for me, the pool matches i have to fence in a very very boring way not not do flicks not go too much to the to the foot uh not too risky attacks you really have to go for the 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 sure if, if i call them the sure move the 100 percent uh, moves that that gives you a touch because if you don't you know even to average fencers you uh you get two doubles and they make a single hit you're three two down and you really have a problem so this is this was for me the the biggest uh, uh, the biggest change and actually the e matches are much more fun for me than than the two fence pool matches because you yeah now and then you can make a mistake and you can still recover because it's it's until 15 yeah. but uh but yeah, the, you get used to it very, uh, very soon, and you only have to you only have to fence five matches, and then and then you win a competition. So <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's all. Yeah, I think uh, when I started doing better in pools, especially at World Cup, is when I decided to be a lot more stable. So my game plan suddenly became: are my legs ready, and is my tip ready? Other than that, it's just do 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 do. Don't move too much. Just focus don't give anything for free uh but then i found in 15s that i i lose i'm always down in 15s and then i magically come back up just because i kind of figure it out uh but after watching a bunch of your matches today i found that you you have a similar pattern very often you'll be losing and then all of a sudden you're just not uh yeah yeah you, you call it magically but i don't think well it's not magic, magically but like you clearly oh. find something yeah, because when, you know, uh, sometimes this is the score, then it's 7-4 or 8-4 for the opponent, but then you already have, uh, you have 12 matches that you could analyze, and then you have the feeling of the of the match, the feeling of the strip, the feeling on, on what moment your opponent comes forward, etc., etc. So, um, this is, this is, I think, what fencing is all about, trying to read your opponent, trying to find uh, his weaknesses and, and, and use it and, 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 kill, and kill it. Um, but yeah, many times I, I found myself uh, in a position that I was uh, leading, uh, but then I, I feel uh, that I, I know I see myself getting too comfortable and, and trying to relax a little bit and trying to show off and then you are three four touches ahead uh, we will see also in this in this final in, in Vancouver uh, and then he comes back and then I have to tell myself okay uh, <laughs> focus back on the on the right actions because I wanted to do a coupe and I wanted to go to the back and do all kind of uh, stuff that for me makes makes fencing fun you know be a little bit creative but to win competitions maybe you have to you have to not be so creative and be uh, very uh, disciplined and very um, uh, you gotta do uh, what yeah, works sometimes. yeah sometimes a little bit boring and you've got to do what uh, what works so uh, uh, this was uh, most of the time, I think 95%, I, I, I didn't lose the match when this happens. When I was leading, the opponent came back a little bit, but then uh, I, I switched back to my uh, original tactics and, and it, uh, then I, I, I uh, could win the match. But uh, yeah, this was, a, this was a mistake I made sometimes. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm also a human being, so. Yeah, yeah, we all, we've all been, we've all lost <laughs> matches that uh, we shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> And then, so a guy like Dida, uh, for, for me, like, it's just unrelenting pressure. He just never stops. So, like, I struggle to find the hole. What was your plan before the match? So, um, if, you, if you take it back to, to, for me, really, the last six, seven years, the, the, new, uh, the new Russian, so to say, because I also fenced against Kolopkov yeah. and, and the older guys and the new guys, what I really saw with these Russians, they, they just go for it. They Even if they are 9-0 up 
or they are eight one down it doesn't matter pre alle and they just push you push you push you push you and for me this is a dream opponent you know i think my defense is not too bad um but if an opponent comes towards me all the time it's for me is fantastic and uh, i think i fenced in my career i fenced Vida five times never lost to him um and and i know this guy is a you know is a big guy is a strong guy he's not so fast um but his what his good points are is his parry eight octave his parry six and then he goes straight through you a little bit like borel but then left-handed and a little bit smaller but many times left-handed fencers they really have a preference for the sixth um so does Bida. Uh, so before the before the final, I really visualized myself in disengaging the six, sixth, and stepping in on the right moment because he was pushing me all the time, uh, but I controlled the distance. I I decided when I got go in, or even in the end of the match, uh, I even made the attack. Not not so much the the contra attack, but really an attack. Um, yeah, and and this guy is uh, I I like to fence him and. But for me, it was a bit like he was late for a train or a plane because he was coming <laughs> at me all the time, all the time. And and yeah, it, it, this is what uh, what I like when an opponent opponent does this. So let's start the match. If I remember well, the the beginning of the match, I was uh, was a bit slow to start. Yeah, it was a it was a rough start. So what uh, what do you tell yourself when you're having a rough start? Um, not not too much, not too much, because I know I know the first two touches I I wasn't awake yet, and and to be honest, I I don't get too nervous if I'm uh, six two behind, or I I know. I can. I'm able to change this score in in uh, in a few seconds. So um, uh, I knew that uh, what I did in the beginning of the match there was not a good moment. The distance was too big. Uh, but I also knew that that Bida was was coming at me uh, uh, regardless of the score. So uh, I, I didn't get too nervous of this. I think it was two zero behind. Yeah. So you kind of know what to expect, win or lose. Yeah. 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 I think I have to click it, right? You you are watching it because Oh, can you see it? it? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, one second. Now I clicked it. I think uh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Oh, it's 3-1. Okay. <laughs> okay. No worries. I can I can always uh I can always fast forward yeah. here. Okay, okay. Uh, we'll go f a little fast. Like it starts off you are kind of down as you said. Yeah, yeah, the attack to the leg. Yeah, it was it was a good attack. And then I believe he just uh gives you as you said like that six right through, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a little bit too late with my arm and he was uh, it was a good flash at a good moment. Oh, and everybody knows you have to make a flash when your opponent comes forward and that's <laughs> what he did. He just made a little step, I couldn't go back anymore and he flashed into me. Yeah, it was a bit uh ugly touch. But uh, as you as you see the whole match I think there was only one situation that I, I uh, went with my foot over the middle line for five centimeters. It was the end of a line. <laughs> so this, this this is the moment, the whole match, and before the match, me and my coach, we prepared for, because he, you know, I play a little bit with my arm, you know, I, I extend my arm, and sometimes I uh, bend it again, but then my foot will go forward a bit, and then you steal, you, you can steal like 15, 20 centimeters. Um, here, so my arm is backwards, but my foot are already a little bit uh, closer to him. And uh, he was going now for the octave. As I told you, he's, yeah. he's doing six octave. Many left-handers do this. And I went in at the right moment. Uh, very clean. He's, he stopped a bit. If he, if he continued, I don't know. Maybe it was a double or maybe even a single <laughs> for him. He didn't. So this is the moment I see you will see eight, maybe eight touches more that I'm, I'm waiting for this moment that he comes forward. And actually, you know, this was a beautiful touch from him. And actually, I also touched him with a coupe on his hand. But he, he was just he first. Just, uh, yeah, it was, was a really nice touch. But, you know, uh, 
the last few years, uh, my coach was uh, was French, um, uh, Alexandre Buysens, and and but before uh, I always worked with my father, and uh, he he teach me to fence like a French guy, to fence like a German guy, and to fence uh, like a Russian guy. You know, second intention. And if I look back at this match, uh, I really fenced like a French guy because you know. Maybe now the French guys are a little bit more offensive, but uh, back in the day you had uh, Grumier, you had uh, Francois Jean, you know, uh, all these guys, French grip fencers, they, they were just waiting, waiting for the right moment that you make your attack or you, you finish your launch and then they would go in. And, you know, if I, if I look back on this match, I was a little bit fencing like, uh, like a French guy. I mean, you are, you, especially since I guess he's fence in France, uh... Quite often, I guess you had a lot of inspiration. Yeah, I learned a lot from from friends. It's not it's not my uh, my preferred uh, style. I'm more a guy that uh, goes for the coupe, goes for the blade, and and the more <laughs> like the more creative actions. But sometimes, what I said, you know, is is needed to to win a competition, to be very uh, consistent and and only focus on one action. Yeah, oh, this, these nice. are basically pretty much the same he falls down with his blade and and i go up i think i touch him uh, on on the hand but funny thing is the guy keeps on coming keeps on coming he he <laughs> there's not one moment that he thinks okay now let the dutch guy do some uh, <laughs> operation or some pushing he just keeps on coming at me when you said uh so you you went through so your father coached you for most of your career right oh uh, yes and then how how is that relation so i almost I've been like I, I like I wish my father was a fencing coach, but how was that like well, getting getting lessons in your backyard or anything like that, or just how was that like? No, <laughs> we we were lucky to have our own fencing uh, sal or fencing hall, and uh, you know uh, until uh, yeah I had some uh, some problem with with the federation and and uh, on one moment you know I just had a I won a, a bronze medal at the Tallinn World Cup and I was uh, I think a top nine of the world ranking and then the the Dutch fencing federation they told us that they didn't have any uh, uh, how do you say confident uh, anymore in the relation between me and my father. <laughs> Uh, this was very weird still until this day we are now seven years later is still weird so at that moment another coach came but until that time I, I couldn't tell you how, how it was or because I didn't have anything to compare but now I do and, and I know that my father is really a tactical is really tactical genius because Wait, was that Gabor Salomon yeah 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 and with he Gabor in Canada it, yeah I think after Canada, he came. Yeah, he came to Holland. His lessons were pure uh, mechanics. Anyway, it wasn't for me. It was very, uh, very physical. Yeah, but but until uh, Gabor came, uh, I, I didn't have anything uh, to compare my father to. But uh, I noticed that at at the top level fencing, you know, if if you take the top hundred fences, you know, all the guys are are physically good. They are they are fast. They technically they can do anything. It really comes down to. Um, reading your opponent and to execute the right tactics on the right moment on the right uh, positioning on the strip and i really uh, found out that that my father is is very good in this and he really teach me this and we traveled to hungary to germany to france to russia and he really looked into the kitchen of all these countries and and teach me how to beat you know uh, classical good fencers um then, you know, I worked together with my father, I think, for 23, 25 years. And then, yeah, there was a moment that I thought, okay, now he teach me everything he, he could teach me. And now it's time uh, for a change. And, and uh, as I told you, uh, now for the 15th season, I fence um, in the first division of the French National Championship. So it's team fencing. I worked there with a coach, Alexandre. He's, uh, he was also a member of the French team. And uh, so in the last four or five years of my career I worked with him and uh, it was a different approach but uh, what I found out that he's tactically also very good and he, he, he say the right things at the right moment what was needed to beat opponents he could really see very fast the, um, uh, the weak points of the opponent and, and I tried to um, uh, to uh, to use you to use those actions and, and before every competition in the morning we would uh, do a lesson purely 
on the actions like even it were only like two three actions that were necessary to uh, to defeat an opponent and that's what we did also in vancouver you know before bida had a little lesson in the semi-final with nikishin from ukraine a little lesson before it was heinzer before that was park from korea and that uh, really worked for me oh, very, very cool to hear thank you Sometimes I blame my father because of my, uh, excuse my English, but my shitty footwork. Because <laughs> this was always a, a weak point of mine. It's, it's not a weak point, but if I if I look back on my matches, I always think, ah, oh, well, why is my footwork so so messy? But you know, I think my hand and my my upper body, it's okay. And and you know, I'm one meter ninety. Uh, I think Bida is is about the same height, maybe a little bit taller. For uh, for some reason, you know, I'm I'm pretty explosive. I, I trained a lot in in the in the gym with a with a flywheel uh, concept. This really gave me a lot of uh, explosivity, and I tried so much to to bend my back leg more. But uh, for some reason, I just uh, couldn't do it. I had some problems with my knees. But uh, long story short, <laughs> I'm not too proud of my footwork. But at the end of the day, it, it worked. Well, I mean, you still had a good career, and I think uh, at the end of the day, like it's what made you you. Right, so no one could really replicate you, which in a sense gave you your own distance. Yeah, that's right. But the, when I stopped fencing, for example, I got a few messages and also of uh, Bardenet, you know, from France. Yeah. And if you look, if you look at his footwork, I'm, I told him, I said, I was always so jealous of your footwork. <laughs> you never, he, he, he never beat me, but his footwork is so is so fantastic, really. <laughs> he is a very clean fencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too clean, if you ask me. But actually, if anything, I would almost say he was inspired by you because he fenced a little. He fences a little bit like you, uh, in some actions. Yeah, with his toe hit and just a. Uh, I guess it would. Oh. It would be like a very refined version of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, I, I can, I can understand. No, that's a compliment because I really like his uh, his fencing. Yeah. His, uh, I love his foot touch. Yeah, I think mine is better, but his is nice. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, I, I. I Focused, uh, I really focused a lot on my uh, on my foot hit when I was younger because this is really a weapon you can you can use and but also really extend because um, you know if if you hit for example uh, many guys especially the older guys they know hey this Dutch guy he's going he's going for the foot all the time but uh, when I started a match I could immediately I think now is uh, he's coming for a next touch and I think I take a very part yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a bit, uh, distance was a bit off, <laughs> but uh, um, I think we're going to the break now, but uh, yeah, so, so this foot hit you can really use, and, and uh, I always felt, you know, I think my, my feeling of an opponent, his body language, I, I, um, I really teach myself to read this, uh, and I could really read if, if an opponent was already thinking about that I was going to the foot, and you can really use this so much because uh, if an opponent is already thinking that you are going to the foot or he's going for the parry eight or he's going for the stop hit if you uh, push your opponent backwards and you make a like a 90 or 95 percent fake a feint then you you know what his move will be so it's it's basically the stop hit or it's the octave because he has to defend his foot then if you make this fake, then the second action, that will be the real action, you know what he's going to do. He's not going to change. Okay, really the top, top fencers, they show you uh, stop hit. And if you really go for the for the foot, they, they parry eight. But there are not so many guys who can do this. So I really use this this dangerous foot hit in my advantage. So for example, the, the first time uh, I see he's going for the stop hit, I block it in six, one zero for me. And then the guy thinks, shit, okay, what if he really goes for the foot now or he does again this block? So, and then you get this whole game going on. So I really use this uh, this foot hit, uh, yeah, many times in matches to, to, to start my, my tactics. Yeah. Oh, and so it's always, and it's always fun, I guess. And you know you're in someone's head when all you have to do is a body faint and you see the reaction already. <laughs> yeah, because, and this is, um, um, 
you say uh, no scientifically yeah maybe scientifically evidence shows that yeah. every human being is a uh, like a, yeah we call it different in Dutch but I think the best translation is a natural reaction when you put push somebody on the back line you know and and the foot is if he goes over this line it's done yeah. so when you put your opponent with his foot here and then you make a, a 90% faint reaction your opponent push you then that's their national nat, uh, natural reaction then if you do the real attack then you know he's going to do this move 9 out of 10 times and uh, yeah this is uh, this is one of the basic basic principles i always used in my in my game yeah, you're like uh, a, here, I guess you're like a lion. <laughs> Dutch lion, yeah. No, here in, in I, I told you that that uh, you know he's pushing me, but actually I am I am controlling the distance, um, and and many times I I waited until he came forward and then make sort of the the stop hit or a counter attack. But here, if if I look at it, I really went. He he stopped, and I really went for the attack because the distance was uh, close enough. I think uh, two weeks before this competition, Bida he won uh, he won Qatar, and he was at that moment he was number one in the ranking. Oh yeah, he, he was looking at that time. I remember he was uh, he was on fire. Yeah, I, I don't. I also in this match I don't see him doing any changes or doing different approach or really pushing me in the on the back line. This was a, a longer attack, and he really pushed through. <laughs> you look mad at you, yeah. You just you're like, what? That hit? <laughs> oh, no, no, I no, I was mad at, at myself that I I, um, I I didn't react in a different yeah. way. He came with a sort of a running flash at me. And this this is actually the moment I think you know I was leading nine five. I was I was getting too comfortable, you know. I thought, yeah. okay. Five more hits. We go tonight to a nice restaurant in in, in Richmond or Vancouver. So, <laughs> and then I think he makes a, a f he take a few more hits now, and then I, I pinch myself. I said, "Come on, if you want to win this match, you have to uh, get back to your original uh, tactic." It was a bit <laughs> lucky for me. Yeah, I was my attack was I don't know 80% half lunge <laughs> slow. He took the parry quart, but I don't know. <laughs> He gets yeah, he, he gets missed. the parry and with yeah. 100% just... hit for him and with a mask or oh, he I don't know. he just missed. <laughs> Unlucky. Not a small guy, but he missed. Yeah, and I take the <laughs> miss was mine. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I hate so much to make this uh, shitty hits, but this is that's part oh, of the game. You don't, you, yeah, you don't have to be too clean, so that's why I apologize to him. But yeah, take it, I take it. I was expecting a double here, but uh, I think I extended my arm a little bit late. He touched my mask, and I I went to the like the lower part of the body here. He touched my mask. Yeah, you see, I was still yeah. disengaging. Yeah, he got I went to mask the mask, and he has such a high hand. Yeah, yeah, I went to the hip. So yeah, it was, it was a good attack. That missed. Uh, here, my my uh, his momentum was very well, and I blame myself. My arm was uh, still bended when he came in. He this went for the coupe, uh, and then he just didn't let you breathe again. Yeah, he he blocked my six now. Yeah, I yeah. went straight. Uh, he blocked my uh, or he blocked he blocked my blade in six. Yeah. Uh, this, uh, actually, actually, uh, this this looks very. Uh, I, I I looked over this this action a few times, and it looked uh, pretty stupid. But at the end of the day, if you see, I just missed his shoulder by a centimeter. I think. I think it's you like the idea is not so bad. You just missed. He was not ready. I you missed, missed over his shoulder. You see? Yeah, I think I I squeezed my epee too hard. Because otherwise, I think it was a it's single a, hit, yeah, or maybe it's a just the difference between this and this. And then, then I make it very difficult for myself because from nine five going to ten nine. 
Yeah, so like this is the part where a lot of times, even myself, right, I'll be up four or five points and someone gets back to like eight, eight, nine, nine, whatever. Um, what would like a lot of people, what I, for me anyway, I found the biggest mistake is, well, obviously if I'm getting killed is to change my game, but do you, like for you there, were you like, I need to change or like, it's just, I need to refocus. But I, I know, I think I, I teach myself to analyze these these three last three, four points uh, very quickly. And, and I know that, okay, two actions, you know, I made a launch, it was a bit unlucky. Um, um, the two other actions, I, I was not focused enough on the distance and he went straight into me while I was, uh, uh, while I was uh, bending my arm. And then I thought, okay, go back to the initial plan that's uh, pulling him, pulling him, and at the right moment, or I step in with a, um, with a stop hit, or I will make an attack when the distance is too small. Only those two, two things, and, and I think that's what I did from 10-9. Uh, from he, he flashed at me, and, and I think... Uh, now, now he, <laughs> now he went over my shoulder. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's a bit too high. I don't know. Maybe maybe I did a little beat, but I'm I'm not sure. It's hard. You can't tell with the the ref's head. I think now I was controlling the distance more, and and at the right moment I really extended my arm, not like the touches before. Oh, nice. Here they uh, did a high feint because, as I told you, I, I visualized so much on the, the feint to the sixth because his preference is really the six, and you really see it very clear now. So I make a high feint. And and this is really it. cool, too. Like, you bring your blade up, so he's already thinking about it. Uh, so he doesn't even know it, and he wants to take six. Or maybe he knows, but... <laughs> and then... Yeah, but yeah, it d doesn't really matter if he really does it consciously because I know his natural reaction is going to the six. So if my blade is already high and he was a little bit low, I make a feint to the mask, then he will take the six anyway. He did it so hard to not just <laughs> go make a step forward lunge. See, I, I'm holding myself back because I know if I do this, I get a stop hit or a six coupe on my on my <laughs> on my back. <laughs> I think I touched him already. He went for my shoulder, and I think I touched him already on the inside of his uh, arm or maybe elbow. Let's see. Yeah, right, right yeah, here. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's it's uh, if I look back on my career, it's it's funny because I I change my my handle like every every five six years, and uh, at the last uh, few years I was using uh, like a small Hungarian grip. It's not the K2, not the K2, but it's a different. The brand. K1 like or? A, oh no, it's it's uh it's similar, but it's a collaboration between Allstar, Hungary, and. Um, a Zerko, it's a it's a different brand, and the name of the the handle is E2, and I found it much more uh, um, comfortable than the K2. They are a bit too square for me. Yeah. Uh, but before that, uh, sometimes I use a French grip. Even in this uh, in this competition, I, I use yeah. I've the got French follow up questions <laughs> for that for you. Yeah. <laughs> in the in the, in the E, uh, but before that, uh, I also use the Belgian grip. You know, with the extra. Oh uh, yeah, that one. A thing. lot of the French guys use it. Yes, and before that I used the uh, size 2 from uh, from Allstar and before that uh, uh, even a very small Negrini grip, so I, I like to change, to so change a lot. Um, what prompted you to change grip so often, or is it just because it feels better at a certain time, more comfortable, or you like change in general? No, sometimes I was just uh, done with uh, <laughs> with my grip and uh, I found another one. and. and a funny story before the the world championships of uh, 2005 in leipzig germany uh 
I, I remember that maybe uh, one and a half week before we were in a training camp. I was so done. I was getting beaten by everyone, <laughs> and and I think I threw my epic. We were training at the the bottom <laughs> of a swimming swimming pool, and I was uh, without the water, of course. But I want to throw my epic on the other side of the pool, and and I told my father, I'm done. I don't feel good. I'm I'm done with this sport, and I'm gonna stop. And in one week, I'll travel to Germany, and we'll see. So I arrived in Germany, and and I always took many epes, you know, by car. I took like six or seven epes, and uh, I went to uh, to a Negrini shop, and uh, I found an, a handle, a very small one. I think is almost the smallest that they have. And I said, "Give me seven. I changed all of them, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> the result was not too bad. It was a bronze medal. But uh, yeah, sometimes you know you need to adjust a little thing." feel uh to feel good again and uh, it works for me well it's funny because at um at pan ams that i just did the airport lost my stuff so i made i i, I got my best career results so far with a weather pin i made the night before with like a <laughs> shitty grip from someone but then i was like i kind of like the grip can i keep it <laughs> so then i found the company <laughs> and i bought more so anyway it's a funny story <laughs> how now i'm using a different grip uh, Crazy. I, I, rem I remember a, an American guy, and I think he's he's still fencing. is is a left-handed inch grip with glasses. Oh, it's uh, I'm sh Yeah, he told me once because I I always look at at the epes of my opponents and look what they are using. I I asked the guy because I trained a few times in New York at World Cups. I saw him and I said, uh, Alex, uh, why are you using? a right-handed French grip when you are left-handed and he said yeah if I take a left-handed French grip I feel too comfortable and I started to do flicks and all kind of stuff so I want myself to not feel comfortable to fence well and I think this was pretty pretty interesting it's <laughs> a interesting way to look at it yeah. all right and then we're almost done we'll watch you win here Yeah, what can I say about this one? This was a well, bit, uh, the the distance was a bit big, and I even touched him on on the 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 hip, you know. But um, well, that one was, uh, was like the other one where you well, like he thought he should have had it, but this one you were so yeah. committed, there was zero chance he could actually parry that one. It even looked like my remise was was a bit faster than his parry. I don't know. Look here, I hit him already. Yeah, you already hit him by the time the parry yeah. with, or I think the repost. was not was not deep enough. He didn't take my blade away. Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah, but the body language of Bida, you can you can already see that he uh, he he's, also knows it's done. He's not pleased. Yeah, he doesn't have the <laughs> comeback body language. Oh. Yeah, the last the last flash he missed he missed my shoulder and then I hit him. The last one was a bit uh, was a bit lucky, but nobody ever won uh, a competition without a bit of luck. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. But oh, you had a crazy day that day. Like you had a comeback against Park. Uh, I did a, I did a park I did a park against Park. Yeah, you did a park on Park. <laughs> you fenced your, your teammate with a French grip, and then you beat yeah. Heinzer. And then, yeah, let's go to that. So here you are fencing. So we're going to do some extras. So you're fencing French grip against Tulin. Um, although, like, the, was there, like, a, well, you don't have to answer this if you don't want drama online or anything. But, like, was the, like, as a team, were you guys that close? Or were you just kind of doing your own thing on the side? Um, you know, he, he lives, uh, I think, 200 meters from where I am now <laughs> uh, with his brother and they they you know the basically they learned how to fence from my father and and they still train in our uh, fencing club um, but I know we you know we fenced and we trained so many times and I know I know with my uh, with my normal handle I, I know how to beat him but I know he has a, a 
he doesn't like me to say this, but I know he doesn't like too much right-handed French grip fencers. So I, I, I used I used this uh, this French grip uh, in this match against him, and I think that the score was a little bit too close that uh, than uh, I would have wanted. But at the end, uh, it you got worked. the win. Yeah. And then I saw I think I couldn't find the footage in 2012 against Afdev. You also switched to French grip at the end of the bout, right? Yes, but that was um, that was a different reason. Uh, this one, this reason uh, in Vancouver was more like uh, to to have some fun. But in in uh, with, against Avdeev, it was the Olympics in London. Uh, no, uh, sorry, in in Rio, right? Uh, it was. Uh, it's, it's either uh, I know. I think it's Rio. Yeah, sorry. It's Rio, 2016. I was was not feeling. Uh, uh, feeling my 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 how do you say my tactics too good and my techniques I didn't feel good and I felt it didn't work with a normal grip I couldn't find the the right right distance and this was more like a desperate move last oh, chance yeah. you know again Abdeev so it's it's different than uh, than this match because in this match I started with a French grip and with Abdeev I changed when I was already behind you know? did you um did you switch to French grip often or was it just like one of few times um. Sometimes in in competitions I would I would use it not too many times but in in my uh, in my weekly training uh, sometimes I I at the end of my career I fence two three times a week and I would only fence with French grip because I think uh, at one point it's a lot of fun but on the other hand really uh, I really learn learned how to think about um, like a French grip fencer but also I could feel myself what is uh, what are your limits and I know that you you uh, lately also use a French grip but I really think and and no offense to French grip fencers but they are very limited um, and and that's what I I really like because uh, I, I fenced many times against uh, French grip fencers okay left-handed French grip is a little bit different story but right-handed French grip fencers uh, for me I always really like to to fence them and uh, when you use it yourself you really learn also how to think like a french grip fencer and i use this in my advantage against french grip fences when i was using a normal handle also so that's a cool learning experience it's, it's funny yeah, i think uh I, I switched the pistol for like a month just to see the difference but then it turns out like even if i'm fencing pistol i'd rather have a french grip and parry with it but uh i, I guess for me it was more about fun than anything i guess uh wow that's so cool and then uh, because go ahead because to me because to me okay when when uh a normal uh, i not say normal but a cross you say cross like a, cross friend uh, I uh, know oh I pistol grip English. sorry pistol grip fencer is behind uh against a french grip fencer is is really tough but uh i always find that when a french grip fencer was behind against me it's even tougher because i know a french grip fencer doesn't take the blade so what i always did is i go straight and then yeah. there's only double 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 so i always really liked uh, <laughs> to fence against french grip fencers yeah yeah it's basically you work hard for the first point then the match is good <laughs> Only the first point, like a panted lead, and then basically you won. Yeah. I know this. Uh, I know this was funny because you had so much attitude that day. <laughs> no, I was always very dangerous uh, when I was having fun, and and this day I, I don't know, but I I was having so much fun, you know. Yeah, uh, this I think it was thirteen eleven. Yeah, the the time was almost over. Yeah. So he, he had to run uh, run up here. Yeah, and it's always hard, you know, to, to fence a teammate and even a club, uh, the member of the same club. It's it's really not easy because you know each other so well, you know, you know each other so well. And that, that's what makes it so hard. And, and sometimes you see, uh, I don't know where it was competition but you have like a, a fencer who is a top 10 of the world fencing a teammate who is maybe a top top 100 and and no, they, they, they are giving them yeah or giving them, them at least a very hard time yeah then don't want to spoil the last one but i thought the last one was uh, was a double 
minutes. I hope it is. Let's see. Yeah. 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 And for example, uh, <laughs> now there is also this Italian fencer Cuomo. He uh, he switches all the time, you know, between French grip and uh, like his father did. Yeah, I've seen him. Grip, depending on yeah. the style, he um, if he, he, I think it's usually someone doesn't parry much. He'll go French grip. Yeah. No, I I think I started with this like uh, 10, 12 years ago, maybe even longer, to also use grips in training. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's always it's always fun to look at other stuff. And then let's see, hold on, we've got so now there's really weird moments. So when you were fencing Kolokov in two thousand five, well, it was a long time ago. <laughs> like and this, what this happened was with here? My, uh, <laughs> he touched me, yeah, because the lights are different. Yeah, yeah, he touched you, but then he got a yellow card, and it feels like his mind exploded. And I don't know why he got the card. So. I don't know how long we have, but I have to tell you a funny story because I I I we basically have as much time start. <laughs> I basically start uh, uh, focusing on the Olympics because because of Kolopkov, you know. I um, next to my my work as as a recruiter, I also have uh, my own company and I do this motivational speeches and I tell about my Olympic uh, story. Uh, but I always start. 1992 because in 1992 I, I went with my parents and my sister to to the Olympics in Barcelona I was nine years old and I was uh, uh, I was going to the men's epee competition the funny thing is because now in the Olympics the the audience is is like three meters away or ten meters away it's not they, you can almost not see the athletes you know you're so far away but in Barcelona it was just like uh you know like an average uh, uh no not even a world cup but like a, a european championships the 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 pools you know they were just with little fences and you could just talk with them and then i asked my father i say i want uh, i said to him i said i want uh, an autograph from mr kolopkov because back then he was already world champion olympic medals blah blah, blah. my father told me okay son if you want to do this go for it so while he was fencing his uh his uh, Olympic competition. <laughs> I went to him. I said, "Mr. Kolopkov, uh, can you give me your autograph?" And and instead of waving me away or or told me to to uh, to go away, he he gave he gave this autograph to me and never told him. But for many years, his autograph was uh, hanging above my bed and and. Uh, I remember that I I was hand in hand with my father walking outside, and I told my father, I said this is going to be my dream i i want to make it to the olympics one day i never knew for a dutch fencer you know what this meant but uh it was so funny that that yeah it was very special that in 2005 and this world championships i think i was a second year senior i was fencing him and yeah maybe later we'll see the end result uh but uh, i think three or four weeks later there was this masters in paris in levalois only the top eight fencers of the world and uh, i can fence there and in the quarter final i beat him uh <laughs> but I, I i i don't think i ever told him that uh, this this story about this autograph and uh yeah but it's uh, for me it's such a uh, inspirational fencer this guy he has he just has everything yeah i say like everyone even uh i did one of these with jenna and he and like everyone who talks about fencing Kolobkov is just like, it's just, it's like fencing another human. Like it's just another entity in itself. That's yeah, unbelievable. If you, if you look at his matches with Janet, what guy thinks to start your flesh when your friend's French opponent who is two meter tall with a French grip is already extending and com coming towards you, but he <laughs> just did it. He just did it. Yeah. And then, so do you remember what this yellow card was that, or this red card was? Because after this card, his mind exploded and you almost won the match because of it. Yeah, that, that's right. And, and for me, it's, it's, it was totally crazy because the, sometimes uh, I am a bit annoyed because my opponent has his blade is too, too much bended. But at this moment, you know, I was in the semifinal, the world championships against Mr. Kolokov. I wouldn't dare to, to think <laughs> about, to say something about him, you know, but it was the referee who was, who was getting on his nerves. And it was the referee himself who told him, Hey, your blade is bended too much. But to me, it didn't even look like this, yeah, yeah. but then he got, he's even asking me like, can you believe, can you believe this referee? And I, maybe I even apologize. I said, I'm sorry, Mr. Kolopko, but uh, 
Yeah, he got a yellow card and then even he got a red card. And he, you can see he was really uh, irritated and annoyed by this. But yeah, I, I couldn't help it. I, I didn't even protest or, or anything. Uh, but then he really lost uh, He lost it a bit. Uh, yeah, Unfortunately, in the end... But <laughs> yeah, you, you have to explain that the... the yeah, know, it's the, like the, the, the lights are... Coming. Or the lights are I'm, reversed I'm the red, back yeah. then, yeah. So anything in the red is you. And here I was using this uh, Negrini, a very small grip. Uh, did I change? Oh yeah, this before? was after you <laughs> bought seven grips the the day before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was sorry, two days before because I had to fence the pool. <laughs> before this match, uh, I beat uh, Striegel uh, from oh, Germany. A like monster, two. seven like seven foot tall. Yeah. Before that, uh, the reigning Olympic champion, um, uh, sorry, uh, from Switzerland, Fisher. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and I, I know some guys who work for the German television, and I asked them, please, I, I I will give you so much money if you can get me the footage of this match between me and Strigo because he was leading 14-10, Strigo, and I beat him 15-14, and. It, after this uh, match, he gave uh, an interview and he said, yeah, it was like a truck running over me. But I was like <laughs> a little kid, you know, just I don't know around, around 70 kilos. And this guy was two meter 10. And yeah, this whole, but I never, I never managed to get this uh, footage. Yeah. And this is like, this was around the time where I like streaming some fencing was sort of starting. Yeah. Like at the very best, you had the semifinals on DVD and that was lucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember this, this, this match going into sudden death, and and he was, he was, he was. This extra minute, I was the one who made the first action, and he was, he was very lucky because I missed. Uh, we came close to each other, and I missed my, uh, my repost or my my hit three times, even between his legs. But it was really unfortunate. But, uh, Let's see. Here, oh. miss, miss, miss. Times I missed. Took the eight, so I think. Eight, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah, it's the left it's leg. Rough. Yeah, it's on the left side of his legs. Then I went, I think, and in the middle of his leg. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and then still block. Oh my god. Yeah. So nice that he doesn't even protest for this touch because well, if you look at the video maybe you could even get this touch but okay let's see so yeah. now you pass i think you could argue yeah. for it yeah so but <laughs> his respect was uh, so so much against me i don't know no he was uh, i think the last uh, touch was a bit similar but then he yeah, i i i parried i parried eight but uh was too strong he just yeah you couldn't through. even get up to eight it was more like a low four yeah 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 yeah, yeah. he remissed <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this little thumb against the referee was very sarcastic yeah <laughs> yeah oh man <laughs> now i know the story yeah 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 oh i was i was very happy with this result it was the first medal uh, since 100 years in Dutch uh, in Dutch fencing, so yeah, this saved your career. You, you don't you didn't have to quit after that. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's all right, we got two more moments. So the, the this one is pretty. I remember watching this live, and at that time I was living in China. So for me, it was really funny just to watch all the Chinese people, like because you you have a lot of attitude on the piece. So to them, it was outrageous. <laughs> um but like but then like he threw his mask they're like he would never do that and i'm like it's on video <laughs> yeah so yeah. this this one was uh this, this was funny and again like wang was always like a dark horse at the tournaments like he would just like either lose right away or like win <laughs> uh, but this fencer for me it was so amazing so fantastic to see him fence you know because it was not like Chinese fencing at all. He did his own thing, you know. He looked always a little bit heavy, but so explosive, he so technical. So it was it was unbelievable. And and 
know, I could never really speak with him, but we always made a lot of fun uh, at, at the competitions. And I found out that he even had a nickname for me. <laughs> That's really funny because he called me Xiao Niao. And I, I, so I know a little the, the, cat? Little bird. Little bird, Xiao little Niao. Bird. Yeah, because I, I said, why, why you call me little bird? Because he said, yeah, you always do this with your left hand. <laughs> and and he, he was right. The, yeah, this so was good. this was my first match uh, of the Olympics in 2008 in Beijing. Um, and and um, uh, I remember one a few days before this this uh, this match, I was in a taxi. I was in a taxi, and I, I saw his uh, his face uh, of sponsored athletes of a Volkswagen. I thought, whoa, this this guy is also famous in in China, you know. So I thought, okay, I'm a bit nervous. My oh, first in China, Olympics, he was huge. Yeah, because you know, uh, I was nervous, but I think, okay, this guy in his home country, being uh, taking a silver medal at the previous Olympics, you know, in Athens, losing to Fischer, uh, and I think at the moment he was also reigning world champion. I thought, okay, the yeah, guy, the guy might also... uh, won, I think. Yeah. I thought the guy might also be uh, a bit nervous, but um, yeah, it was it was a special match, and yeah, he he threw his mask, and of course, yeah, it was a bit out of frustration, but you know, you sometimes oh, you have the to Olympics, this. right? And the pressure is on you. Uh, if, if you don't, sometimes you have to. Uh, I, I normally I don't like to do it, but you know, if if uh, if this can uh, win you a point, and and you know, it's it's not, it's written in the rules that this is not allowed, and and I think the referee. Uh, uh, I, I actually I don't know what's happening now, but I think he got I a think yellow card. Right. Red card. I think they read him. Yeah. yeah, and that that like absolutely. I mean, granted, he had to rush at this point, but that just completely gave him a meltdown. Yeah. And then, so unfortunately, I'm going to bring back this memory. Oh, oh, I I'm really happy that you find. I I really want to know where you found. Oh, this, you want me to? Uh, I'll send it to you after I have all of them. I just can't put them on. Oh. I can't put the whole thing on YouTube because it gets copyright. Yeah, and I also I I haven't even had the chance to to yeah. see this match, and also not even the match before against. I, uh, the I have Korean, all of them, so. so I'll send you all of them <laughs> later. Fantastic. So like for, for me, this match like you started down a three, but like at one point I was like, fuck, I think Bass is gonna win. Because he caught you off guard <laughs> at the beginning, and then, like, Canon was, like, shitting himself. <laughs> and, like, I'm curious to see, like, what kind of, what did you decide to change? Distance and, and, and push him more. Because, uh, well, this is uh, strange for me to, to look back at this match for the first time since Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> No, we we have fenced many times before me and uh, and Canon in 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 teams, you know, in the French competition, but also in World Cups. And obviously, I knew him, I knew him very well. But <laughs> to be honest, this day, like Tari in 2008, this day, yeah, he's was, a monster. He was unbeatable. He was unbeatable. But I know that that his game is is this, you know, first extending his arm and then moving his body and then uh, bending his arm again and then make this sort of flick. Uh, and I I knew that that this was uh, what he was gonna do. But but his timing and his explosivity this day was was uh, was something else. Because as I told you, normally I I really like to fence uh, French grip right-handed fences. Okay, he's he's a bit different, you know. Um, my mistake was uh, that I didn't push him him enough uh, because if you if you let him push you you know he that's what he wants you know he's, he's more controlling the distance now than than for for example in my match against uh, Bida than than I was yeah. the one who was controlling the distance so uh, my advice to other fencers let let him push you and really push him to make the distance uh, closer uh, otherwise you will have you will have no chance. So to take his blade is is very hard. So you really have to go with like a opposite with a block. It's not yeah. like a parry, but more like a block. You kind, yeah, yeah, this you kind was of brought a it back to just uh, even almost, I think. Yeah, yeah. This was the moment that uh, I think I came back eleven ten. Sure. To be honest, uh, 
day I was not in a in a good shape. I didn't feel too. Uh, I didn't feel feel the momentum, you know. But, uh, I think even if I had a a good day, it would have been very hard to beat uh, to beat Canone because he was fencing fantastic the day. Oh yeah, and like he, man, he had a hard tableau. Like he had Lemardo, then he had you, yeah. then he had Bida, uh, <laughs> then he had Rislin. And then finally Seclosi, like, just crazy. I can't yeah, show was... too much of this because I don't want my video to get banned. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic uh, day for him. And the funny thing is we, we shook hands afterwards. And he said, I'm very sorry to beat you. You were always one of my idols. And I said, <laughs> why are you telling me this now? You know, you, you fence great and, and good luck, you know. I hope you win. It's it's very it's a very nice guy this uh, this canon and the funny thing is uh, I think two months later or three months later we had to fence the French national team championships and my first match of the first of day <laughs> was against canon yeah was, uh... perfect so I guess we'll call it on that more than an hour uh, so hold on. stop recording.